our entire body is made up of physical atoms. That means physically we are made of atoms. Atoms are held together, every atom, and the content of every atom is held together by its binding energy, attachment. Similarly, the entire content of the earth is also held together by its binding energy called gravity. Our mind is made up of atoms, physical atoms. In even the entire earth is made of atoms, physical atoms. Similarly, our body is also made of atoms. It is the energy of the body that produces our mind, the mental energy. Mental energy is made of physical energy of our body. As body is made up of atoms held together by it, their binding energy, even our mental units that we call mental atoms are also made up of binding energy, held together by binding energy. Every thought is a unit of our mental world, of our mind. Every unit of feeling, every unit of thinking, they are the atoms that go to make our mind. As they too are made of, are united or held together by a binding energy, a universal binding energy, we feel in our mind the binding energy as our attachment, like desires, etc. We may call it the mental magnetic energy. The magnetic power has a positive aspect as well as a negative aspect. One aspect of the magnetic power is repelling, the other aspect is attracting. It is attracting energy that forms the binding energy. Binding energy makes our mind to be attached to something, hold on to something mentally. Mentally we hold on certain things. We hold on to our ideas, our views, our opinions, our expectations, our convictions, and so on. We are mentally bound. That is the binding power of our mind that is found in every unit of the mind, every atom of the mind. Enlightenment is the complete eradication of the binding energy in our mind. That is why detachment from all attachment ultimately culminates in the enlightenment. The bliss of Nirvana, the supreme bliss that we one can experience, is based not on any attachment, but detachment 
non-attachment. Attachment is called raga in Pali Buddha's language and its opposite aspect, resentment, is called dosa in Pali. We get attached to certain things and resent third things through our ignorance according to Buddha's teaching and that is called, that ignorance is called moha. Therefore, the nature of an unenlightened, unenlightened mind consists of attachment, resentment and ignorance. The main function of our ignorance is attachment to certain objects, animate or inanimate, living or non-living, even attachment to events. Any attachment mentally is made of the binding energy of the mind. that is produced or generated by every mental unit, every mental atom. Getting rid of that binding energy, extinction of binding energy, extinction of attachment means the explosion of our mental atoms to which we hold on to. With the disappearance of attachment called Raga, the enlightened mind is the result of a pure mind that is Vitaraga, devoid of all attachment. After enlightenment, we don't get thoughts in our mind. That is why Buddha in his first uh, pian of joy that we get in the Dhamma for the uh, Jaravaga. He said, Visankara Gatan Chitta in the first pian of joy. That means thinking ceased because attempts of thinking get exploded and destroyed and extinct by enlightenment. The destruction of the nucleus of atom, every atom in our mind, mental atom in every mind, is referred to by the Buddha in his first period of joy as Gaha Kutang Visankitang. Gaha means holding on to. Kuta means here the nucleus, the highest point. The noblest, the highest, the greatest attachment of those who are on the path to enlightenment can be called the attachment to the supreme bliss of Nirvana. Even Buddha tried hard for nearly seven years to get enlightened because he had a strong attachment to the state of mind called Nirvana. He got enlightened only after dispelling his attachment, getting rid of his attachment to be enlightened. As long as there is attachment to anything in our mind, the mind cannot get enlightened because enlightenment means complete eradication of attachment to all things animate and inanimate. Non-attachment. A pure mind is a mind that is not attached. That means a pure mind that is not polluted through any contamination, 
through contamination, the mind gets contaminated when we are attached to things that we contact. Buddha referred to his enlightened mind as a lotus, that is, on the water but detached from the water. In Drona Sutta, he said, I was born in this society, I was brought up by this society, and I am being fed and looked after by the society, but I live without getting attached to the society. Detached from the society, like a lotus that has its birth in the muddy water, brought up in the muddy water, fed by the muddy water, but live apart from the muddy water. That is the state of a mind where the binding energy of its units, its atoms, have got exploded as in the explosion of an atom. The greatest energy of an atom it is binding energy, atomic energy. Similarly, the greatest power of our mind is also its binding energy. It is a physical power that can be used both constructively and destructively. Enlightenment means complete freedom from that mental energy, after which there is the complete extinction of attachment. Not only attachment, even resentment, because the mental magnetic power that we call its binding energy has a positive aspect and a negative aspect. One for attraction, the other for repulsion. One for being bounded and the other for repelling, repulsion. They are like the two sides of the same coin. Where there is an attachment, there is a resentment. When, for example, mind holds on to something, mind cannot hold on to the same thing or two things at the same time. Mind has to leave what it is holding to get hold of some other idea. Mind is jumping like a monkey from an idea to idea, holding on one thought, jumping from that thought to another thought, jumping from that thought to another thought. There's a stream of thoughts, stream of consciousness, and that is called a process of thinking. Visankara Gatam Chitta means the process of thinking ceased because enlightenment happened to the Buddha when his greatest attachment called attachment to Nirvana came to an end, got extinct. It is recorded uh, before his enlightenment he sat under the great Bodhi tree, never to get up, thinking, let my body decay and enter the earth here. I'm not going to get up. That is the moment he gave us all his effort to get enlightened, all his attachment to 
enlightenment. Let loose. He relaxed his mind and he accepted things as they are. He became part and parcel of the nature and he was, his mind is ready to accept anything. Detached from all attachment. And in that is the moment he got enlightened. Detachment from attachment is the explosion of the binding energy in an atom. Like the explosion of an atom. Once one atom of the mind get exploded, there will be a chain of reaction as in the explosion of physical atoms. All atoms get exploded around the explosion of an atom. Similarly, at the enlightenment, the atom of one thought get exploded with the destruction of his binding energy, Graha Kuta. Graha means attachment, binding. Kuta means the highest, the nucleus. Then what happens? All atoms, mental atoms around it get exploded and the mind becomes empty, free of all mental formations, mental images. That is why Nirvana is called sunyata, emptiness, void. The mind, a void, empty mind means mind empty of its content. Our mind contains thoughts and feelings. Feelings are associated with thoughts, ideas, concepts, opinions, prejudices. Enlightenment means the mind becoming completely empty, void, because no thoughts are formed after enlightenment. That is why it is said in the Jaravagga of Dhammapada, in the first period of joy, Visankara Gatanchitta. Thought formations cease to take place anymore. No more thinking. Thinking ceases after enlightenment because enlightenment means the eradication of all causes for thinking. We think of things that we like, dislike, or ignorant. Liking in Buddhist language is called Raga. Disliking is called Buddhist language Dosa. Ignorance is called Moha. Raga, Dosa, Moha are the triple causes of our entire thinking process. That means we think of things that you like, dislike, or ignorant of. Enlightenment means illumination, dispelling with the darkness of ignorance, a metaphorical expression. No more ignorance means seeing things as they really are. When you see things as they really are, you realize there is nothing that we can attach to or resent. Because everything is made of instant events, sparks. Everything that we experience are made of our thoughts. They are mental images. We don't experience anything outside the world. We experience only what our sense organs report to our mind. They are very limited, their capacities. And with their information, imperfect information, our mind forms imperfect, imperfect mental images 
and we experience only that mental world. After enlightenment, the enlightened mind is not deluded, illusion by mental images, because all mental images are illusions to which we get attached. If they like them or which we resent if we dislike them. Liking and disliking as well as ignorance are based on the idea of self. Like means I like. Dislike means I dislike. Ignorance means I don't know. I is the basis. Complete enlightenment means the complete eradication of the concept of I. That is why Buddha's teaching is called anatta, soulless. In Buddhist teaching, there is no soul, either within us or outside. There is no soul called God or Creator, there is only a creation. Even within, within us, there is no single unit that we can recognize as I and mine, myself, my soul. That is only a mental image, mental formations. Enlightenment means realizing all mental formations are illusions, mental illusions. That means the disappearance of all our attachment, resentment, as, and the ignorance based on all our mental activities. Thereafter, there are no the mental activities of a self, mental activities of a I. There are no mental reactions. I like, I don't like, I don't know. No, no reactions like that. But there are continues till the final passing away, the natural sensation. The eye can see, even of the enlightenment, the ear can hear, the nose can smell, the tongue can taste, the skin, the skin can touch objects. And the mind can experience mental images, but the enlightened one, ones have a realistic attitude that all mental images are illusions, therefore they are not carried away by mental illusions. That means their mind is free from attachment and resentment of mental illusions through ignorance of their reality. That is the nature of an enlightened mind. That can be reached when our attachment to anything completely disappears. Disappearance of attachment means the disappearance of resentment too. We get attached to certain things. For example, one may get attached to nirvana, supreme bliss, because one does not like the suffering mind, the suffering state, the suffering life. The mind is expecting something blissful supremely, because it does not like suffering. Therefore, attachment to bliss means resentment of the suffering that are inevitable, natural in our body and mind. Therefore, expression of the binding energy of our mind means the expression of the extinction of not only attachment but resentment and ignorance and that is the enlightenment.
that can happen to us at any moment. When our mind is realistic, accepting that they are without any attachment, that is what happens on the path to enlightenment. The shortcut, as said in the Bahya Sutta, Buddha says in a few words, the shortcut to enlightenment is to be aware of sensory experiences without thinking of them. We think of our sensory experiences when we like them, dislike them, or when we can understand them, complete ignorance. With the same shortcut to Nirvana is to be alertly, fully aware of sensory perceptions, but remain without thinking of them. We can remain in that state when the mental magnetic power called karma in Pali in our mind is suppressed, is dormant, but it can get activated again, liking and disliking. But we may enjoy in the process of meditation a state of mind free from liking, disliking and ignorance. Ignorance means fully aware of sensation, but not thinking of them. And that is a blissful state of mind that can become permanent and eternal after enlightenment. But even before enlightenment, we can experience that supreme bliss free from the mental magnetic power of attachment. After suppressing even the mental magnetic power or the binding, binding energy, that is natural and that is universal. The binding energy is a universal energy that binds every unit together, content of every unit together. We are also bound both mentally and physically by this binding energy. Once the binding energy is destroyed, the process of life from life to life comes to an end. Enlightened life is the final life of samsara, of an enlightened one. Because the binding energy that go to form a mind or the body get extinct after enlightenment. And that is the explosion of the highest binding power, referred to by the Buddha in his piano of joy as Gahakuta. Explosion he referred to as Sankita. That can happen to us too at any moment once we are enlightened.